In this video, we will take the island that we created in part one of the simple island tutorial, and we're going to make a color map and import that into Unity to create this Unity world. So here we are where we left off with the first segment. Uh, before we create color maps for this terrain, there's some adjustments need to be made. First of all, there's trees rendering in the height map, so we need to remove that. And that's because a boreal node is pinned as underlay, so the trees actually change the height map value. So all we need to do is go back to the, the node before it, surface, right click, pin as underlay. The other thing I'd like to do is flatten, I want to be able to target some of the lowland above the waterline but leave the mountain and kind of flatten the land just so it's a little more of a, a lesser grade. And the way that I'm going to choose to do that is I'm going to go before erosion, because erosion can really blend any blemishes. I'm going to choose zero borders, and I'm going to go into a clamp. And what clamp does is it'll smash the height values. So right now it's 100%. Go down to 19. You see it flattens everything. The, the rule, the information is still there. It's just been reduced from that. Now I don't want to flatten my land like that. I want to leave the rock structures. So what I'm going to do is want to target. And I'm just going to use a simple rule. I'm going to use a height rule to target it. We had used a, t a height rule to target our beach line in the previous segment. So in this case, we're going to target our rocks. I'm going to come off of zero borders, type height. And we want, uh, we actually want the white to be everything below the mountains. But the way that I'm just going to roll with the minimum. So I'm going to bring up the minimum to show the rock. I'm going to turn fall off to five. And that'll give me a better view. And then we'll bring this down until it's kind of above the tree line. Maybe 17. Okay, so we have this roll. We want to invert this. We want everything below that to feed it as a mask. And I don't know an easy way to explain how to think of masks, but uh, you'll know when you get it wrong. Because if we go ahead and mask clamp from where we already have it, and we reduce it down, you'll see it, it killed our mountain. So if we invert this mask and then choose it, you'll see it flattened the lowland and left our mountain. So let's choose a more reasonable value, 50. Um, you can see that contour line is very extreme, so that this isn't a good blend, but we can blend it with the original if you could see the difference there. So this is what the original was. This was what we clamped. And this is the in-between. And this can be adjusted based upon whatever looks right and, and what you're trying to create. The, the further to one side or the other will give you a flatter area. I'm just going to leave it toward the middle. Actually, let's check all the way around. Okay, this is a little obvious. So that gives us some some benefit, but it's not too much. To another way to, to view this based upon what we had before, this is what we had. I'm going to click F again to pin this view to this node. And then I'm going to make this connection to erosion and it should update this to represent our flattened. And you notice the mountains didn't move. So that's just a way to make it uh, make an adjustment that might be more suitable to your game if you want more flat areas. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is to keep this tutorial simple. It's more of an introduction to exporting RGBA splat color masks. Is I'm going to, in, instead of a green island, I'm going to put snow. I'm going to do a snow node. So we're going to take our last height rule, whatever we have, as 
underlay. Okay, I've got this node locked uh, or pinned, so I need to unpin that. Let me to do this. So from surface, we go to snowfall. And this may not work with uh, the biome that we're working with, but it's going to be a very simple rule that, to select once we go to the next stage. So I'm going to raise the snow line up because I do want there to still be grass. And I'll go 0.3. That just adds a little detail, but it's it's a beginner level um, layer rule that we can easily pack into the splat map. So what we want to do, in, in the way my workflow works, is I'll create the height map on one graph, and then the output it can be even more complicated, so I'll put it on a separate one. You can just all have it together. But either way, you're probably going to want to work with portals, and portals is how we grab data from other graphs. And what the, the data portals that we are wanting, first of all, we want snow. And I'm going to choose the hard option because it gives a real crisp rule, a bright rule, that you'll, you'll see uh, later. So to create a portal, you take the output, you drag it out, and you release it, and it gives you that option. Since I have one on here, it's, give, it's telling me to remove, but that's how we create those. I want to create one for my uh, de facto height map. So we're going to create a portal there, so we have an output for that. This isn't a very descriptive name, so I can rename it. I'm going to just say height map. And other nodes that I want is I'm going to target everything under the ocean and even the beach. So we're going to go with C, make a portal. And I'm going to use the C that we created, which is based off this height, or the, the beach that was created off our height rule. Um, make a portal for that. Name that beach. And another one for fun is rivers. We'll add a data regarding where the rivers are. Let's see. Yep, that's enough. So we'll go, we'll jump over here and uh, we'll start putting this together. So to grab it from this side, I'm going to use FX nodes. And to grab a portal, you drag out from the input, the left hand side. And you release and it gives you the list of portals that you have. So we put, I usually put height map at the top. I'm going to go to snow next. Put our beach. And I'm going to tuck these next three together because they're all going to be the same texture channel. So we have beach, we have sea, and I'm going to do rivers. Oops. Okay, rivers is one we have to level. There's our rivers. Uh, in this case, it's kind of a dim. If you're thinking in terms of building, um, packing an RGBA image, you want to think of the amount of brightness of white represents how strong that texture is going to be in Unity. And this is rather fine lines, but it, that's related to this, which is a nice crisp rule. It's a little, uh, it's a little weak. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to combine all of these and I'm going to add this one in twice. So what we use here is a multi-combine. So what we've been doing to add and subtract things is just drag output to output and it creates a combine. But a multi-combine allows us to do multiple of the same operation. So if we choose add, which is what I go for when I'm doing color mask, 
because I want the brightest. And if you're adding data, you're enhancing that brightness, that uh, the contrast. So there's our river. And there's actually nine inputs on here that's just not represented with symbols here. But all you got to do is just add it to the center, and then you pick one. And me adding that one twice bumped up the value so it's a little brighter, more vivid. And this is a really crisp looking rule. This is kind of what you want to be going for in most cases. In some certain instances where you're blending grass textures on different channels, you may want a gradient. But in this example, we're going to keep it simple. Our snow, that's a done deal. We don't have to do anything with snow. Our height map now. So we have snow and we have our sandy, gravel, whatever you want to make of it. Uh, pebbles rule and then I'm going to put rock and grass grass is just everything else that's not these other things so to do grass uh, the way I do it is I just pick a, no, a, a node soil is a good one if you're wanting to blend to create multiple textures of grass but in this case I am going to invert it And then I'm going to add it to itself. And what that basically does is give me a white canvas. So this is everything, and then we're just going to subtract out the other rules to give us what's left will be our grass. Um, so for, for rock, we want to... That's funny, that was an earlier recording of what I'm doing now. Okay, so for rock... There's two nodes I'm going to use. I'm going to use protrusion. And that gives us kind of a convex rule. I'm going to bump it down, or bump, bump the value up a little bit, which will create more, it'll dim it, and it'll be less noisy. And then I'm going to come in here with a threshold. Because we don't really want to work, if you think in terms of what it's doing here, there's a haze. You can see this haze. That's not black. And that's going to be competing our rock texture with our grass texture. And we don't want that. That'll, that's not going to look right, and that's going to frustrate, especially once we start introducing uh, like micro splat with height-based blending. The rock is just going to be everywhere. So what threshold does is force it to be yes or no. And we're going to adjust the value until it gives us something that we want to work with. This is, this is looking pretty good because we're going to stack another one on top of it, and that's the slope. And for slope, we're going to choose about 40... 90 and a 5% fall off, 5 degree fall off. Okay, so that's all the steep parts. And we're going to stack the steep parts with all the protrusions with a add. And there is rock. So there is, it's that easy. We even put a cliff here where the beach was cut. Okay, so now we have rock, we have our gravel, beach, sand, pebbles, we have our snow, and then we have everything. This is our soil. So what we'll do for this one, since these are pretty clear, but not quite, because one important kind of uh, strategy for when you're thinking about what what texture should rule in a certain instance? You know, you would think rock, well, that's the earth. That's it's going to burst. You know, that, nothing's going to really stick to it. But that's not the case with the snow node because it just sort of drapes over these areas where we've targeted it. So I want the snow to be isolated. I want it to be dominant where snow needs to be. And I'll, so I'll cut away the rock because it doesn't snow, doesn't show from under the snow. So in this case, I'm going to subtract. So the basic operations here, if you, if you follow along, is 
this kind of column, and I guess this should be dragged to be consistent. This section is combining, it's kind of grabbing the data to represent each channel. So we have rock. Uh, it's actually combined here. We have soil. Which is a work in progress. We have our snow. And then we have our this other channel, the, the sand. And then the next operation is to subtract things out, to create that weighting factor. What do we want to dominate its domain? And in this case, snow is kind of the ruler. So if we subtract, I think I have my input swap. Let me do that again. So coming out of rock to our combined node, the second node is what we'll subtract. We'll subtract our snow. And we'll bump that to 100. And see, you can tell from here to here, it removed the snow. That way, rock shows strongly and snow shows strongly right next to each other. And that comes into play when you're wanting to put velocity flows for a real visual effect. Um, but in this case, rock is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put splat. It's our final output node. I'm going to feed rock first. And then for soil, soil is kind of the catch-all. So we're going to do a multi-combine. I'm going to subtract 100%. I'm going to subtract our rock first. Boom. Subtract snow, boom, and subtract the sand, beach, gravel layer. And there it is. See, there's the river has been cut out. Our beach, um, that's that'll represent whatever the soil or grass layer looks like. And now we can pack these in. Now with the splat node, it has the four inputs for RGBA, but it doesn't actually render the alpha as something you can see. So I usually stick snowfall in there and just presume to see black where snow would be. To get another visual of it, well, we don't need another visual because it's here, but if we wanted to assign this red instead, that's what it would look like. Okay, so this is ready to go. To export, we need to right click, mark for export, and we're going to choose our height map. Export that as well. Go to the build settings. This other stuff is competing. I'm going to remove it. Uh, FX is our height map. That's going to be a raw file. And our splat map is going to be a PNG. These are the other settings. These aren't default, so make sure to update yours. And I'm going to start the build. Okay, I'm going to bring these into Unity, and we'll put this together. Here I am in a kind of pre-prepared scene. And there's an ocean existing. To import the files, which I have shown here, we need Terrain Toolbox, which is a part of the Unity Registry asset. For Unity, I'm using 2021. For 2020, you have to select the Advanced Enable Preview Package. But it's right here. Terrain Tools, we install that, and that'll give us a selection window, Terrain Toolbox. I already have it pinned. And on the Create New Terrain tab, uh, these are the values that we want. Uh, the, the Gaia World Space is 5 kilometer by 5 kilometer. So that's the width and the length. The height is 2600, 2.6 kilometers. Uh, height map resolution really only needs to be 1K because that's what we exported. 
we want to choose raw file checkbox and that allows it to allows it allows us to browse for the file and we want to flip access that's that's important if we don't flip access of the raw file the color map and the terrain won't match it'll be uh, it'll be obvious that it's not right so let's go ahead and select where my Type map is. So we're flipping, and these are the settings. I'm going to go ahead and create. There we go. That's what it generated. A little trick if you want to cheat to have 2K terrain resolution, and you can work with a two and a half kilometer map, you can actually reduce these values by half and the height as well. Change this it'll actually in, import it as a 2K resolution. But of course, it'll be half the, the world space. Uh, so you'd have to um, design the features to the scale of two and a half kilometers, which is about six and a half square kilometers. Okay, so here we go. We have our height map. Now we want to choose our terrain, go to the inspector, paint texture option, and we want to pick four textures. We created a four channel splat. So we want to pick four. So one of them is going to be uh, rock. And I, I like limestone. So we're going to go with limestone. There is, we need a gravel for the beach. We need a snow for our snow layer. And a grass. Okay, now that we have those loaded into our terrain, we'll go back to Terrain Toolbox. We'll click on Terrain Utilities tab. We'll open up Terrain Layers and we'll choose Import from Terrain. That packs, that loads our pack textures. If you add more than four, then it's, it's going to create artifacts. So for an example, if I just pick another random one and we go in here and we want to add a splat. The one we choose is the one marked RGBA. And we've imported five. We drag over our splat and we just click uh, this one right here. Apply to terrain. And that will impress the, uh, the rules. That will map it for us. Now some of these, you can tell uh, what's not right these need to be swapped and there it is so that's what we've created and it may look all right but I'm, I'm my experience this is causing an issue when it's there when we apply this flat map so i'm going to remove it and i'm going to watch for changes and it changed it so there were some little bleed through happening because that was caught up in the transformation but now that, that, now that this has been established, the four channels, you can add as many layers as you want. Uh, so let's see how it, how it turned out. We have our sea level, our beach revealed. There's rock along the beach. Again, you can, if you don't like the way the beach is, you can increase some of the values on the sea node to give you a, a wider beach. And it won't cut in, it may not cut in so sharply. I think that looks pretty good. If we want to go ahead and um, use a height blaze blending like micro splat, we can add that. I have that installed. So we'll turn this into a micro splat terrain. Okay, that's finished. Uh, I'm going to pack these textures okay update and 
All right, so now it's now using height-based blending, which allows the rock to protrude up a little bit more realistic. And let's do a fly-through. Hope this helps, and good luck with your trains.